Hi, my name's Penny and as usual I'm here to talk about some bookish things. Specifically today I'm going to do the You're Not Good Enough book tag. So I saw Pierre Ford and also Emily Fox do this tag recently so I thought it looked like fun. I do think the original video has been taken down but I will link what I can down below. Uh, so what I did is I got a bunch of different character names and I put them into my Wonder Woman mug. Got them all in here. And so there are 15 questions and for each one we're going to pull out two characters and decide which one is not good enough. I'm somewhat concerned because I tried not to put too many main characters but I also tried to just write first names so it's possible I won't even remember which character I was referring to because I started planning this video like a week ago and then I didn't film it when I was going to film it and anyway let's get into the questions. First question is you only have one spot left in your spelling bee team who would you pick to complete your team? So we'll pick two characters. First one we've got is Farway who is one of the characters from Invictus which I don't have here because I lent to my sister and then the other one we have is Lisbeth Salander who is from the Millennium series so she is kind of a badass, really smart, but mostly good at maths. Farway is mostly good at time travel and maybe leadership. Honestly, I think both of these guys might suck at spelling. But I'm going to choose Lisbeth Salander because to be honest, she'll be able to figure out how to cheat. And even if we lose, she'll like somehow hack the system so we win. Or at least She'll keep me grounded and remember that spelling bees aren't the most important thing. And why are we bothering? That's what I want from a teammate. So next, both characters want to kill you. Who will you kill first so you have a better chance of surviving? Firstly, we've got Garland, who is from Madigan's Quest by Margaret Mayhe. I read that recently. I really loved it. Next, we have Manon. I'm going to remember to say it like that, even though it's not normally how I say it. Um, Manon is from the Throne of Glass series. She's a badass witch. So, I mean Garland is not a threat in any way at all. So we're going to have to fight Manon and get rid of her if we're going to survive. So number three is you're on The Bachelor and you're down to the last two. Who are you going to give your rose to? I didn't pick these characters thinking about who was the most attractive. So firstly we've got Kate Daniels and then the other one we have here is Leaf, who is from the Crown of Stars series. So honestly the Kate Daniels series is my favorite series in the world and Kate Daniels is badass and amazing and she would totally get my rose. Leaf is just like not that interesting yet to be honest. I'm only two books into a seven book series and so far she hasn't done enough to win me over but Kate Daniels Kate Daniels has my heart so number four you've been chosen for the Hunger Games who is most likely to volunteer in your place so we've got Nathan who is from the Half Bad series he is a half white half black witch and then we also have Erin from Middle Game who was my favorite character in Middle Game even though she's not really a main character but she is and I loved her and I think even though Nathan kind of does sacrifice himself at the end of the half Blood series so he's got a reputation for sacrifice but Erin also does quite a lot of sacrifice I think if I can manage my newt's goal of becoming an amazing alchemist Erin will volunteer for me. So number five is you're stranded on an island. Who will you sacrifice to engage in cannibalism? I, I guess I could eat a person if I if it was life or death but I'm not that excited about that idea. Um, so what characters have we got to eat? Cassidy. Who is this? I told you I wasn't going to remember them. So the first one we've got is Cassidy and I honestly don't remember who I was referring to. Let me think about that. Do you know who I'm referring to? I don't. And the other one I have is Violet, which is Violet Baudelaire from Lemony Snicket, A Series of Unfortunate Events. Cassidy though. Who's Cassidy? 
Oh, I remember. Cassidy is Cassidy Blake from Victoria Schwab's new series, Cassidy Blake series. I read the first book, City of Ghosts, and Tunnel of Bones is coming out really soon. I'm really excited to read it. So, what was the, even the question? I've forgotten now. Oh, who am I going to eat? Wow, these are both children. So not that great for eating, because not that filling, and also, like, that's a shit move. <sighs> I don't want to eat either of them. I mean, this is really unfair, but I think Violet's already gone through enough horrible stuff in her life and her family needs her, so not Violet. And Cassidy can see ghosts, so she already has some idea of death. So I'm going to eat Cassidy. So the next question is, you're the next DC Marvel superhero. Who is your sidekick? Let us see. Firstly, we've got Nyx, who is from Cameron Hurley's Beldam Apocrypha series. And then the second one we've got is Asano, who is from the Three Dark Crowns series by Kendara Blake. I mean, neither of these are going to be great sidekicks. Nyx is a really badass bounty hunter who often screws things up and isn't good at working in a team. So that's not a great sidekick. Asano, however, is always off not doing what she's supposed to be doing, changing the whole way that things are supposed to work. Like, she, she's not a great sidekick either. I mean, maybe... I think I'd pick Nyx, because I'll just have to work with her and help her become less of a screw-up and, like, work to her strengths somehow. At least she's like a badass. I don't really know how I'd use Arsenal's skills. So Nyx is my new sidekick. So number seven is you're the manager of a new avocado admiring firm. Who would you fire for lack of communication skills? Okay so we got two names here. The first one we have is Elena Mendoza which is from the apocalypse of Elena Mendoza. And then I also have Huck Connolly, who is from The Scorpio Races by Maggie Stevada. Who has the worst communication skills? Probably Huck. I actually don't remember. Elena Mendoza has like the ability or discovers she has the ability to heal people and she's had voices talking to her her whole life. I don't really remember. Did she have great communication skills? Doesn't she do something at the end? I definitely think she's probably got better communication skills than Puck because Puck is just angry and very passionate but not great at communication. So Puck, you're getting fired. So number eight is you've just finished reading a book where your favorite character dies. Who is the most likely to comfort you? Oh, I'm losing characters on the floor. It must be the one that died. Okay, so we've got Minya from Strange the Dreamer. I think I know which way I'm going to go in the guessing. Uh, and we also have Driller, who is one of my favorite robots in the Descender graphic novel series. He's like this big Driller robot, but he takes care of people, even though he's like, Driller is a killer. I love Driller, and he would 100% take care of me if I was upset. Minya, on the other hand, would kill me so she could control my spirit. Minya, not great at the comfort thing. Or at least, the way she'd do it, not so great. So Minya, not gonna comfort me. Driller, gonna give me all the hugs. So number nine is Ugg, it's high school. Who is most likely to be part of the popular clique? Um, so the two names we've got, we've got Devi from the Name of the Wind series, or the King Killer Chronicles is what the series is called. And we also have, I never know how to say this, like I can't say it, Rack. Uh, he is a, a death demon, whereas Devi is like dark magician deck collector, is the best way to describe her. I mean, both of them are kind of loners and like to do their own thing. So, neither of them? Maybe Devi because she would actually just be doing it so that she could get something out of it. 
and she would manipulate them all to allow her to hang out with them so she could get some things from them and like blackmail them or something. I guess Debbie, but really neither of them. So number 10 is the day has arrived, you're finally a year older, who would have the nerve to forget your birthday? So we've got Bob, and you might think that that's one where I would forget who it's from, but no, Bob is from the Bobiverse series where Bob gets frozen to be brought back to life in the future, but wakes up as part of a spaceship. And we also have Sydney, which is Sydney from Vicious and Vengeful. Sydney has the ability where when she touches someone uh, or touches something that's dead, they will come back to life. So Bob would not forget my birthday because he would put it into his system and he would automatically get reminded of it. Sydney probably has better things to worry about than my birthday, to be honest. So Sydney's going to forget. Bob's going to take care of me and the rest of humanity to be honest. So number 11 is you've just found a rising booktube star. Who is it most likely to be? So firstly I've got Vasya who is from the Bear and the Nightingale series or the Winter Night series as it's actually called. And I've also got Spencer who is from what is that series called? What is the book called? Starsight? Or is that the second one? Skyward. Skyward is the first one. Starsight is the second one. Claim the Stars series. I don't know. By Brandon Sanderson, Spencer is like this young girl who wants to become a pilot and she is struggling to do it because her dad's a coward. Vasya also struggling because she's able to teach, talk to weird mythological creatures and that's not accepted either by the people around her. So they have a lot in common, these two. Which one would more likely be a booktuber? I don't know that Spencer really reads much. She didn't mention reading at all, did she? Whereas Vasya, I mean Vasya likes to go out and do boyish things, but would she read? I don't remember mentioning her reading either. I don't feel like either of these really do much reading, which I think is an important part of booktubing. Hmm, I honestly don't know. I feel like I'm gonna pick Vasya to be the star just because I feel like she'd have a lot of opinions and want to share them. Whereas Spencer's too busy flying around in spaceships and fighting aliens. Which would be a cool vlog, wouldn't it? Maybe. Not if it means humanity is stuck on a planet waiting to be killed off. So number 12 is sleepover time. Unfortunately, you can only invite one person. Who will it be? So our potential invitees are Julie, who is from the Kate Daniels series. She is Kate Daniels' ward and also has some magical abilities of her own. And we also have Jin from the Elemental Assassin series by Jennifer Estep. She's this badass bitch. She's really good at cooking. But you'd probably make stuff that would be too fancy. I quite like plain stuff. I probably wouldn't like it. And then probably in the middle of the sleepover, someone would arrive to kill us and that would really ruin the sleepover. Whereas Julie, I think we could have some fun. We could talk about some boys. She's got some boys going. I do also think Julie would want to sneak out and do some troublesome stuff as well. So we'd probably get in trouble. But at least someone wouldn't be exactly trying to kill us. We'd be getting into our own trouble. So I think I'm going to pick Julie as a fun sleepover friend. Number 13 is Bam, you're pregnant. Who is the father or the mother? So, oh, three of them want to do it, but we can only have two. So we've got, oh crap, this is another one where I don't know who it's from. Imagine not even remembering the mother of your child. Melanie. Melanie's kind of like just a boring name. So I... We'll need to think about which Melanie I am referring to. Why do I do this to myself? The other one I have, oh, I remember, even though it's a normalish name. So the other one is Janet, who is from the Magician series by Lev Grossman. Janet is one of the queens, or becomes one of the queens of, what's it called? I don't know, the magical Narnia type land. I ended up really loving her, like, surprise, 
I thought she was kind of a boring character and then she in the last book was amazing and I loved her so like based on that I'm saying Janet's probably going to be the mother of my child because I don't even remember Melanie but let me at least try and remember who Melanie is <laughs> Melanie honestly I have no idea who Melanie is um, if you have an idea of who Melanie might be, a character from a book, possibly not a main character, but a character from a book that I've read, I don't know who she is, so she's forgotten, Janet's the mother of my child. So number 14 is you've written an important text, who would see it but not reply? So we have got Nightfall from The Legend of Nightfall by Miki Zakarakit who has the ability to like change his weight at will and uses that to get up to all sorts of trouble. We also have Althea Thea who is from the, what is that series called? Live Ship Traders series. Oh, is there a Melanie in that book? No, there's an Althea. So Althea and Nightfall, I mean, probably neither of these guys would reply to my text to be honest because Nightfall is a thief and most of the time off getting in trouble although he does learn responsibility by the end of the book but most of the time he's getting himself in trouble so he would look at it and be like I don't, I don't have time to deal with this shit right now and then Althea in the book she should be communicating with her family about what's going on instead she disappears off and goes and does her own nonsense so Althea probably wouldn't reply to me either even if it was important, like she's got a track record of not replying to messages. Whereas Nightfall at least does come through and save the day quite a few times. So I'm going to say Althea doesn't reply. Nightfall's got my back. So number 15 is you've just woken up and it's time for breakfast. Who has your mum been replaced with? Now I feel like this question's implying that my mum still makes me breakfast and since I live by myself, and my mum, I mean she doesn't live that far away, but she's certainly not bringing me breakfast every day. But maybe one of these new mothers will. Doubtful. So firstly we've got Jasna from the Stormlight Archives by Brandon Sanderson. Jasna is a scholar and a heretic and not really very motherly. In fact she's uh, chosen not to get married and not to have children even though that's the accepted custom and then the next one is Gert so Gert is from the I Hate Fairyland so Gert is from the I Hate Fairyland comic series where she gets stuck in fairyland and she can't get out I mean Gert's no good as a mother she needs a mother even though she's now older she's still stuck in the body of like a seven year year old in fairyland like destroying everything probably like less than seven where did I come up with the number seven anyway she's very young and immature and violent and not a very good mother so we're gonna go with Jasna I feel like Jasna would try to instill in me a sense of self-sufficiency and that's good because that's what I want from a mother that's what I got from my mother like she's caring she cares about like the the overall outcome though she's not going to be a nicey nice mum. My mum is actually like the cutest person in the world and really lovely but she does encourage me to be independent and open-minded and that's what she has in common with Jasna. So those are all the questions. I have a big mess of characters now to clean up. So as I said do let me know if you have any freaking clue who Melanie might be and of course whether you would have answered any of these questions differently. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you next time.